Hello, my name is Shamil, and I will navigate you through the second tutorial of our summer school, which is MaxDA tutorial. Uh, so MaxDA is a model of MaxQuant, which enables DA data analysis and um, completely integrated into MaxQuant. So the interface is almost identical to the interface that you use to analyze the DA data. So that's why I will assume that you have listened to the uh, DDA tutorial, because you just did. And uh, I will not show you the action, the steps that you need to take uh, like in live, uh, but I will just show you this presentation. So, um, uh, there is a general, um, this is the general steps that you need to take to process the data in mask one. And so you need to load raw data, specify the experiments and fractions if uh, you had the fractionated data. Uh, then you select the type, add spectral library files. Uh, if your experiment involved um, multiplex data, then you specify your multiplicity and labels. Uh, you enable label free identification, and then you add the fast files of uh, the reference proteins, the, the reference proton of the organism that you studied. So, um, loading raw data is exactly the same as the DDA. There are three main ways. I will show only one, but all of them are viable. Um, you can either use the load button uh, to open the dialog window, which will allow you to navigate through your file system, select uh, the raw data and load it into Max Quant. Or you can choose, uh, you can click raw load folder, and then again the dialog window will pop up, and you can select the folder inside which uh, your raw data is located and load all of the files that are in this folder. It doesn't matter if there are other files, uh, uh, not only raw data, MaxQuant will automatically recognize uh, raw data files and will use only them. And the third way is to just drag and drop your files into MaxQuant. Uh, it will work exactly the same. So after that, you need to set experiments. Again, it's just the same as with uh, DDA. Uh, you select the um, row. Uh, click set experiment button, the window appears, you enter um, the name of the experiment corresponding to this file, and uh, click OK, it appears in the corresponding field of the table. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, then uh, you go to group specific parameters uh, tab, and here in the type section, you can select your DIA type. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There are three DIA types in MaxQuant. Uh, Teams MaxDA is reserved for installed data, BoxCar MaxDA for BoxCar data, and all the rest is covered by MaxDA. Uh, mainly, it would be OBITRAP data. I would assume. Uh, after that, um, you need to select uh, the library type. Uh, the default one is MaxQuant, so it's the library which was generated by um, data, DDA data processing on MaxQuant. So it follows the format of um, evidence TXT and MSMS TXT files. Uh, another option which you have is uh, TSV, and this is for uh, spectral libraries which were obtained from other software which, that is compatible with TSV data output. So if you select MaxQuant, then you have two fields, uh, for one for evidence files and one for MSMS files, and uh, using the Add Files buttons, you can add files. Uh, that uh, constitute your spectral library. So, um, yeah, another thing that I uh, want to mention is 
like uh, when you generate uh, your libraries, uh, when you run your DDA experiment to obtain the spectral library, you need to set match between runs, uh, not because you want to match the data between runs, but because of the retention time alignment. That, that was already mentioned in the Jurgen's talk, but I just want to repeat it because it's important. So the next step, you go to the label free quantification uh, section of group specific parameters. Here you can select L of Q uh, to enable label free quantification. And thus we can uh, compare our files, uh, the quantification between our experiments. And uh, the third main step is to go to group parameters. And here in the sequence section, you can add uh, the reference proton. Again, just add the um, uh, button. We'll open dialog window. You navigate to your files and you have the set. So another thing that was mentioning is the DIA parameters. Um, DIA has a lot of settings. They are located in the instrument tab um, in the group specific parameters. And uh, there are a lot of options to customize uh, DA data processing, uh, but um, usually you should be good with the default ones because they were um, optimized to be uh, like the best compromise between uh, between the performance and the identifications. So um, you need to change them only if you absolutely know what you are doing. So for example, if you want to leverage the precision um, the, of uh, team stop instrument, you can uh, go to these parameters, intensity thresholds of um, MS1 and MS2, and MS1 DAA specifically, and you can change them from the 70 and 30 respectively to um, 17 and 15. So this way uh, you will get more identifications, but data processing will be more slow, uh, will be slower. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, one thing. But again, if you don't know what values you need, then you probably need default values. Uh, so this is uh, the DA in general, and uh, now. I will go and talk about um, various uh, different variations that you can have on top of that. Uh, the first one is the Plex DA, DA with multiplexing. And uh, here um, uh, it's uh, similar to the DDA, but um, the important thing is that you need to add the contaminants um, libraries. And uh, I will explain how to obtain them later. But for now, you can see that you can add several library files, uh, again, using the same button. Uh, here we have uh, the measured library and the contaminants library. Then if you scroll down, you can already see on this screenshot, but uh, you can set multiplicity, the same as the DDA. And, uh, here you select, for example, two, and you get um, several columns uh, of labels uh, corresponding to the multiplicity that you have chosen. Uh, so you can select the labels that you used uh, by ticking the checkboxes. And uh, the caveat that you have here is um, that by default, um, Max Hunt will search all the channels uh, for the uh, peptides that it has in library. But for example, uh, but if you have the contaminant library, uh, contaminants should be only in the light channel. They should not be labeled. And if it, uh, if Max Quant will search uh, the heavy channel as well, it will probably find something, but it will be the false identification, false positives, and you don't want them. So you need to tell Max Quant to not search this channel, uh, to not search this channel for this library. So how do you do it? 
you have another box here down uh, from the labels. And here uh, you can write um, these numbers. So each row, each row corresponds to library. So the first library that, you had, that we had uh, was the measured library. And here we put zero. That means search all channels. Uh, the second row is for contaminants library. And here you put one. This means search the first channel, the light channel. Um, so is that. And another caveat which that we have here is the label identification. Because despite that this is uh, the labeled experiment, you still need to set um, up label identification. Because um, in these experiments, uh, the multiplexing is used uh, not just as a technique to enhance precision, but for multiplicity itself, to run more samples in the less instrument type. And so uh, here to compare the quantifications in the samples, you select label for quantification, and it will account for both uh, different row files and uh, different multiplex inside these files. So it will quantify all everything. Uh, that's it for PlexDIA. Now, uh, another specific data that you can have is the Teams data. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the DDA. Uh, so again, you load it. You can't use just the load button, but you can uh, load it, uh, load the whole folder with this raw data or just drag and drop it. This is probably the simplest way. Then in the type section, as I said, you select Teams Max DA instead of just Max DA. And uh, that's it. Uh, you're set to run Teams Max DA. Well, you also need to specify library certification and uh, pass the files and global parameters, but that's the only things that are different from the Orbitrap DA. Uh, so the third DA variation that I wanted to cover is PTM DA. And here, um, it's not as with DDA where you need to specify um, modifications that you want to search for. Uh, here, it's entirely um, um, determined by the spectral library that you choose, uh, that you use. Uh, if uh, your spectral library uh, uh, was built with uh, the modifications that you want to study, MaxQuant will search for the types of these modifications like without uh, additional settings. Uh, you just need uh, the right spectral library. And the fourth thing is the discovery mode. Uh, this uh, is... Um, um, this is the way uh, that you can use predicted libraries in MaxQuant. And uh, to use them, you need to download them from this website. So you go there. Uh, this is how it looks like. You go to the discovery libraries folder. Uh, and here you have um, a list of different species of so each archive here contains the spectral libraries for the corresponding species. And also you have here the contaminant zip, and here you have uh, the contaminants library um, that I showed before. So if you download one of these archives, then inside of it you will have evidence and MSMS, TXT, the spectral library. And you also have faster files. And it's important that if you use this um, library, you need to also use these faster files uh, because the library was built based on these faster files. And if you use another ones, then you can have some compatibility issues. But that's a bit clunky way to do it. So um, in the end, I want to show you a glimpse into the bright future. Uh, the only fly DIA libraries. Uh, 
it uh, it's not done yet it will be uh, released in the post summer school release of max Planck. but um here's how the interface looks like uh you will have the third library type predicted and if you select that uh then max Planck will just generate spectral library on the fly from the faster file that you specified in global parameters Samuel, before you continue, we have a question here. Oh, yeah, sure. Just for some clarification on, on the the DIA libraries, um, does Max Quant come with a library already sort of in the system that, that you can use? So you've got the three different library types, and I think you said the TSV was like a, an ex from an external library from a different website or something like that? Yeah, yeah, from different software. Okay, and then the max quant with that first one, the max quant one, is that one that's already on the max quant software, or it does not come with max quant. This is just um, basically it's the format uh, that you use uh, the, the this evidence txt and the um, SMS txt. Uh, you obtain it either by uh, running max quant DDA, so. These files are the output of the DDA run, uh, or you download them from this website. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. So you select predicted, uh, you generate on the fly libraries. Um, one thing that it changes is actually what I said before about PTMDIA, because uh, if you generate library on the fly, uh, you actually need to specify what PTMs you need, uh, what PTMs you want to have uh, to search for in your data. And uh, you will do it the same way as the DDA by using these uh, uh, lists in the modifications tab and um, selecting the modification and moving it into the right part. This is uh, reserved for modifications that Max Quant will use uh, in data processing. Um, yeah, and I think that's it from my part. I will be glad to answer questions if you have them. We have one here. Yes, just a quick question. Can you share the download site again? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, you will have this uh, site uh, in the um, assignments as well so you can just open the, the DIA assignment and uh, there is this website there hey uh would you elaborate a bit more on why why there's a contam what why the first case doesn't need a contaminant file and the second case need a contaminant file in your evidence and ms msms.txt session uh, you, you mean in the Plex DH? You could have included in the other case as well. It's just so here it's actually a good example um, to show then that you can search the contaminants only in the light state and not in the heavy state, while for the other you use both states. But you could always include the contaminants. So there's no reason why it was missing in the other case. Okay, thank you. I don't know if I completely missed this, but. Um... Where does the evidence.txt file come from in the MSM? Like, where would we get it in our data? Uh, so again, you get it from the DDA runs. So do you always have to do a DDA analysis before you do a DIA analysis? Uh, not if you use predicted libraries. Okay. 